Hey. Hi, Max and Mothers. How are you doing tonight? I'm going to give you guys a second to pop on. I'm really amped up tonight. I'm really excited. Really, really ready to talk about the money. I'm really, really ready to talk about the money. I'm really, really ready to talk about the money. Comment down below once you're here. Um, I went live at 7 yesterday. Not that many people joined. So do you guys like when I go live later in the day? Let me know in the comments. I'll go, I'll swing back on that later. But do you guys like the later live? Because it seems like when I go live after 9 or even at 10, I'm in Eastern Standard Time, 9 or 10, more people show up. So if you guys like it later, I can definitely do like my live right before I go to bed. Um, even though I'm probably going to be up for a minute with babe. Senate runoffs. So I'm gonna give you guys a second to pop in once you're here. Say hi. Hey, Crystal Blackmore, how are you? Still waiting for you to email me back, girlfriend. I hope all is well. Um, so today's topic is money. We are gonna be talking about are you being intentional with your money? Hey, Joya. She said, Yes, baby boy is asleep and I can tune in fully. Yeah. I know in the academy, I always go live at 9, and most people can come in at 9 p.m. Eastern. It's late for the West Coast. If you have kids or sleep, I already put Kinsley to sleep, so I'll try to do it later. Hey, Heather, did you get my email back, Heather? Did I email you back? No, you emailed me. So the answer to your question is yes. Let me respond to you right now because I read your email. Oops. Let me respond to you literally right now. Um... Actually, do I have a draft? Okay, I thought I had a draft, Heather. So we're going to talk about money, y'all. Money. I'm going to respond to you, but I'm going to get a Zoom link to Heather. So I'll respond to you after, but I already started a draft. So that way, when I get back to work, I will draft it. Okay, so let me put it on my calendar for tomorrow. Perfect. All right. So today we are talking about the money. So I want to tell you guys a little bit of a backstory. Do I look fuzzy first off? Am I fuzzy? I turned off the Wi-Fi on my phones because I know Kinsa is watching her iPad. Bay is on his game. Am I fuzzy? I turned off the okay, Wi-Fi. Okay, perfect. On my phones. I'm not that fuzzy. It's not as bad as it usually is. All right. So today we're talking about money. Why? So when I started my YouTube channel. I wanted to help you with more than just couponing. Couponing is the vessel. Couponing is the tool, is the process, is the strategy that we use. But the end goal, the transformation, the result we are all desiring is saving money. So my channel is Krista Maximizer because I want to help you maximize your life through couponing. I want couponing to be the vessel that you use to save as much money as possible on the food and the household items where we tend to overspend so that you have more money in your budget to buy all the other things you want like you need and things you may not have coupons for or things that may not go on sales or things you just want because you work really hard and you want them. But if you weren't spending $1,000 a month on groceries, food, eating out, you would have an extra $500 a month to do what you see fit. OK, so that is why my channel is Krista Maximizer. That is why my membership is shop with a purpose to make progress on your big financial goals. This thing, this couponing is about more than just getting free and cheap stuff. It is about you having the money that you want. All right. So tonight we are going to talk about are you being intentional with your money? I want you to let me know in the chat. Are you being intentional with your money? Are you using your money to its potential? Are you maximizing your dollars? Are you doing the things that matters most with your money? So either you're being very intentional, you're doing all the things you want to do with your money, you're really good, or the answer is no. I'm doing one out of the 17 things that I really want my money to do for me, 
Um, <clears throat> I'm only doing one out of the 25 things that I know I should be doing for my money. No, I'm overspending at the grocery store. I'm eating out. I'm spending frivolously. I'm up in Amazon. I'm doing every deal possible. No, I'm not being intentional with my money. So I want you guys to answer that first. Let me know in the chat. Are you being intentional with your money or are you not being intentional with your money? Now I'm going to say hello. I said hello to Crystal, Julia, Heather. Yes to your question. Eight o'clock is fine tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern is time. It's good for me. Good evening. Yes, we were asleep. Yes. Thank you for letting me know, Kiana. Nope. All good here. Perfect. We're not fuzzy. Hey, Tanisha. Don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks, Kim. Um, Heather says no, but I'm working hard to put all you've taught me to good use this month. Okay. That's fair. I appreciate that, Heather. Kiana, I love it. I want you to send me a testimonial or post it in the group this week of your weekly wins of your, your year in the academy, what you've learned, how it's helped you, how much you've saved, how it reframed your mind. Please go and leave a, a testimonial in the group so that I can feature you in all the places, okay? Um, yes, please. I would love to hear about it. Felicia says, hello. Hi, Geraldine says, hello. Hey, girlfriend. We are talking about money and if you're being intentional. So in the chat, I need you to let me know if you're being intentional with your money, you're making the best use of your money, you're maximizing your dollars or no, you're a little bit all over the place. You're not making your money work for you. Are you sitting around and other things you're like, I wish I could go on vacation. I wish I could have a new car. I wish I could pay off this $500 credit card. I wish I could buy a new pair of shoes. I wish I could go shopping for clothes. I wish I could buy some new furniture. Do you have a lot of wishes with your money and you're not making progress on them? I want you to let me know. We're going to talk about how you can be more intentional with your money and make better use of it so it's working for you and not against you. And you don't feel like a slave to your money and in the sense of like you're at your money's mercy. We want your money to be at your mercy. We want you to call the shots and know where every dollar is going and be as intentional as possible. Hey, Aurora, how are you? All right. So the first thing that you need to do when you're being intentional with your money is shop with a purpose. I know you guys have probably heard me say it until I'm blue in the face. I'm going to keep saying it until I turn purple. It's going to be my mantra forever. It is my brand standard. Shop with a purpose. That means you are buying what you need. You are strategically shopping to get the things that you need. I'm going to give you a couple tips that I typically only share in the academy to help you know what you need. You need to take inventory. You need to learn your family's usage for pretty much everything that you use. You need to know how long it lasts you. Just like how you kind of know how long a tank of gas can last you. And if you don't know how long your tank of gas can last you, how many miles it lasts you, how many days it lasts you, you need to do that. You need to take some time throughout this month to see how much stuff do we actually use? Because once you know how much you use, you'll know how much you need and bam, you'll know what to buy, all right? The next step when you are really shopping with a purpose is to have a budget. You need a yearly overview budget of how much money you know you want to make, how much money you know you need in order to fund all the things you want to do. You also need a savings plan so you can know what are you saving for long term. You should know each month, not just what the bills are for January. You should know that in May, it's my daughter's birthday. And I typically spend about 300, 350 on my daughter for her birthday. In our minds, we always want to spend less. But when I've done the math, I've reviewed my spending. It's always between three, maybe 400. Her dad oftentimes will split it with me or we'll do things together. So I just know that we need around $400 for her birthday. I'm not going to wait until April to try to find the $400 for her birthday. That's not the best use of my time. I know in January when my kid's birthday is what I typically spend. So that way in my year long savings plan, I can decide how much money am I putting away for birthdays and not just hers. Bays, am I doing something for my mother, which her birthday is like in a week. Am I doing something for my sister? What am I doing for my own birthday? So you need to know what your yearly savings plan is, what your yearly budget is. So in a month, you can be as intentional with your money so that you can make your money work for you. You are going to ask yourself when you are buying something that is not essential. Essential is the things you need to, I think as Dave Ramsey calls it, your full walls, the things that you have to pay or else 
You will be in the streets, uh, taking the bus, uh, walking, you know, naked, starving, right? When you're buying something and you have financial goals that you're working towards, I want you to ask yourself the question, is this the best use of my money? It's almost like, do I really need this? And I'm going to give you guys some examples in a second. So once you create that monthly budget, you can decide where your dollars are going so that you are not frivolously spending. So I'm going to talk about one of my swap maximizers. She's been with me, I think, for maybe four months at this point. When I first started working with her, we were working with budgets. And now we're actually working one-on-one. -on -one. We had, we're going to be working together one-on-one -on -one for a few more months. And I've been really able to hone in and help her see where all her money is going. So if we had her budget. She was tracking her spending. But then some things came up when she was like, you know what? When me and my husband go out, I typically buy a fountain Coke. That's not in my budget. When me and my husband go out, sometimes he wants to buy X, Y, Z, and that's not in our budget. And sometimes when I do this, I spend X, Y, Z, and that's not in my budget. So she was spending money that she didn't even realize that she was spending because it's just second nature for us to just whip out our cards and buy what we want in a moment. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you not to treat yourself. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. But I'm just telling you to focus in and say, is this the best use of my money? If this is making sense to you, type yes in the chat. Is this the best use of my money? Is it wise for me to buy a Coca-Cola every time we are out? Or is it better for me to buy a 12 pack? And I know when we're out on the road, I want one so I can crack one with some ice and bring it in a reusable cup. I have a thousand of them in the house and bring it with me as we're driving. So instead of spending $2 every time we go out, I can buy a 12 pack for $4 or when they're on sale at freaking Walgreens, I can get a four pack for, I can get a 12 pack for $4 at Walmart. And that'll last me for 12 outings. We go out maybe twice a week. That'll last me six or seven weeks, as opposed to me spending $2, $2, $3 every time we go out if we happen to go out more. Does that make sense? Type yes in the chat. You really have to know where your money is going, okay? So the, the next thing when it comes to being, well, I'm going to tell you the steps. That's kind of what I'm on right now. When you're thinking about the best use of your money, you should start with your why. Why do you want to have money? Why do you want to have money? So when your why is set, your yearly savings plan is set, your yearly budget is set, you know that my number one goal is to pay off my debt. My number two goal is to save $10,000. So if these are my two financial goals, right? Those are my why. When I'm about to buy a smoothie, it's $5.00. I got fruit in the freezer or I have a gift card to Walmart that I can buy fruit. I have green powder. I have everything I need at home to make a smoothie. Is buying that $5 smoothie twice a week, $40 a month, the best use of my money? No. So cut out anything you can live without for the purposes of being intentional with your money and reallocate those funds in the way that you can still get what you want without spending those premium prices. Now, I'm not telling you not to treat yourself. In all budgets, I suggest you have some sort of fun monies. You don't wanna go cold turkey because that's when we go tur cold turkey, that's when we're like, man, F it, I'm just gonna buy whatever I want, right? So I don't tell myself I can never buy a smoothie. I say the most you can buy in a month is like two smoothies. I give myself about 50 to $100, depending on the month, for fun monies. So I can spend that $100 a month on whatever I want. So if I want to buy new shoes, if I want to buy clothes, if I want to get my hair done, if I want to go to an event, if I want to invest in a new course or something, I have $100 a month to play with. I don't care. However, if I have 50 or 100, only two smoothies because that's $10 and that's already a chunk. So you see how I'm being very intentional where I'm saying you can still treat yourself, Crystal. But you can't treat yourself every week like you were before. You can't treat yourself three times a week like you were before because we have big financial goals that we're working towards. We need to make our money work the best for us, okay? So let's bring this over to couponing because that's why a lot of us are here. So the best use of your money, couponing, is to buy what you need. So you're buying what you need for this week and then you're buying what you need for your stockpile. 
And this goes back to the beginning when I said, you have to know how much you use to know how much you need. So Kinsley typically eats a box of cereal per week. So I know that we need four boxes of cereal per month to survive. That's how much we need. So if I wanted a three month supply of cereal, I know that we need 12 boxes. Does this make sense? Once I'm stocked to 12 boxes, I know, okay, good. We have a three month supply. Once we get down to a one month supply, I will buy more. Or when the cereal is 99 cents, I will make sure I get two or four to add to that stockpile. And if you do that with our current sales cycles, you will literally always be rebuilding your stockpile. Use in lotion. We use about one of these every, me and Kinsley use them. She usually has her own, I usually have mine. It takes us about six weeks to go through one of these each. So every six weeks we go through two of them. So I round that up. Every two months we need at least two of these to get through lotion in our bodies. So if I wanted a three month supply, we technically need four, two for me, two for Kinsley, right? If we want a six month supply, we need eight. Uh, four for me, four for Kinsley to get us through six months. Does that make sense? So now that I know that, once I have eight on the shelf, I know I'm good for six months. I'm not gonna buy Userin again until it's at my stock up price. That is the best use of my money because yes, this is an item that we desperately need, but in order to avoid paying more for it, I'm going to get it to my stock up, to my stock. Six months is a good stock. And whenever I can get it for 35 cents, 50 cents, anything less than a dollar is my stock up price for lotion, then I will get it and add it to my stockpile. That's the best use of my money. The best use of my money is not every time Userin is on sale because we love it and we need it, do I buy it? If this makes sense to you, type yes in the chat. I'm going to give you a couple more examples of things that we oftentimes mindlessly spend on and it may not be the best use of your money. So we're probably not doing it much more right now because of COVID, but a lot of like happy hours and eating out with friends. So if you have big financial goals and you have a set budget for how much money you're allowing yourself to eat out with, you have to be mindful when a friend asks you to go grab a drink after work, when you're dining out multiple times, is this the best use of your money? Are you staying within the constraints of your budget? Are you using your money the way you want to? Sometimes you'll tell your friend, you know what? I'm only going out X amount of times per month because I'm trying to buy this house, girlfriend. Most of the times when you share that kind of stuff with your friends, they understand. Listen, I have one of my stories. She's like, I'm trying to buy a house. I'm very limited on the things that I am investing my money in because my focus is the down payment in my new furniture and everything that I need, my inspections when it comes to my new house. And we all respect that. So we know when it's like somebody's birthday or a wedding, we invite her with ample notice because we need to make sure it's the best use of her money and that the amount of money that she has for events isn't all gone. Because certain events are a priority to her, but every happy hour, every time we're going out to eat, it's not she's not going to be there because her financial focus is on her house. But I said she still treats herself. She goes to a couple happy hours a month. She eats out with her friends a couple times. She goes to big events. But we all know that her big focus is buying a house. And I'm going to say this. Um, don't be afraid to sometimes share those goals so that people understand, like, you're not being standoffish. You're not trying to hang around them. You have big financial goals. And if they were smart, they would do the same. Um, so some examples of things that really add up that we don't think about. So when I think about coffee, I'm not a coffee drinker. I drink hot chocolate. But if you are someone who loves your Starbucks and you go very often, maybe you go almost every day, is that the best use of your money? Can you get the coffee curry cups when they're on sale? Can you get your own coffee beans and brew your own coffee at home? And if you must go to Starbucks, are you maximizing your dollars by using flus to get cash back so you can constantly earn? Are you maximizing your dollars and being intentional by signing up with the Starbucks rewards program? So after you buy so many drinks, you get one for free, right? Are you referring people to flus so that you can get instant cash back from your referrals and then use that to buy your coffee so you're not spending as much? Do you give yourself a weekly budget? My sister, she loves Dunkin' Donuts. She will load $20 on a Dunkin' Donuts card every paycheck. She gets paid twice a month. The girl gives herself $40 a month to treat herself to coffee. 
all the other times, she's literally brewing coffee. She bought a coffee um, container and she has the coffee filters at home. She has a coffee pot. She buys a can of coffee. It lasts her for a whole month, right? And whenever her $40 from her Dunkin' Donuts is gone, she brews her coffee at home all the other days. That's the best use of her money. She still gives herself money to treat herself, but she's not going overboard because there was a time when your girl was going to Dunkin' Donuts every single day. And at the end of the week, she spent $45 at Dunkin' Donuts buying breakfast and buying coffee. And she's like, I've just spent $200 this month on Dunkin' Donuts. That is not the best use of my money because I want to get more furniture. I want to travel. I want to do whatever. I don't want to spend $200 a month at Dunkin' Donuts. Does this make sense? Be intentional with your money. So coffee is one of those things. Smoothies, it was for me. There was one point when I was at going to work, I was buying a smoothie from Tropical Smoothie probably four times a week. So I was spending about $25 a week. So I'm spending $100. I have a blender at home. I have fruit in my freezer. I could have bought my own smoothie. I was just being crazy. And on average, I probably spent about $30 to $35 per month on fruit. And that gives me smoothies for the whole month when I want them. So I had to go back and I say, all right, you can give yourself one smoothie a month. If you want more smoothies, you better blend one before you leave the house. And bam, I was able to significantly reduce and save $60 per month by not going to tropical smoothie four times a week. Excessive eating out, which I kind of talked about. But if you have a freezer full of food, but you're door dashing out of convenience, is that the best use of your money? How can you sit down and strategically plan your grocery shopping and your meal planning? So when you get home from grocery shopping, there's a meal cooking. Maybe you put something in the crock pot on the days that you grocery shop. So when you get home from work or you get home from grocery shopping and you're like, oh, I'm so tired. Let's order in. Girl, you got chili in that crock pot. I don't know what else y'all cook in the crock pot because I'm not a big crock pot cooker. Um, or you got a pizza that you're going to pop in the oven. You have leftovers from the day before. Maybe you cooked dinner before you went grocery shopping. So when you got back home, it was already ready. If this is making sense for you, type yes in the chat. Okay. Um, so I know eating out and food is one of the things, especially in quarantine. It's like, let me just go ahead and order some food because I'm not feeling well. And I was talking about this in my SWAT Maximizer Academy last night about eating our feelings and making ourselves feel better, which is fine. But you got to make sure that it's the best use of your money. Is this the best use of my money? I caught myself doing, whoops, my computer's about to die. Let me plug it in. I caught myself doing quarantine, y'all, um, door dashing. Yeah, I was using flus, but I'm like, is this the best use of my money? No, I could probably be saving this money and using it towards something else. Door dashing three times a week is not what I actually had in mind. Once a week, that's it. Your cap is like $30 and no more, okay? So if you need additional help, support, encouragement, accountability around this, I want you to type yes in the chat. If you're like, Crystal, I need a little bit more help. I need to be more intentional. I need more support. I'm ready to stop feeling like I don't have enough and I'm ready to step into having enough. I want you to type yes in the chat. If you are ready to receive um, more money in your life so that you can be more intentional, I want you to type yes in the chat. If you're ready to have a budget that you love, a stockpile that you love, a meal plan that you love, I want you to type yes in the chat. If you're ready to get support around couponing and being intentional with the things that you're buying because you're buying only what you need, I want you to type yes in the chat. And I'm going to invite you to join my Shop with a Purpose Maximizer Academy. Inside the academy, we cover all the things that I just talked about, okay? So we start with couponing and saving money. And then from couponing and saving money, we help you be intentional with that money to make progress on your big financial goals. We had some sort of sermon service last night. I don't know. I started preaching in that group last night. We were live for 90 minutes last night, and it was like everything that we all needed. And it was all around budgeting and saving money. Good night, Heather. Budgeting and saving money in just just being better, being worthy, believing in ourselves, and really making progress on the things that matter most to us. And we set our goals and we set our action plans for January so that we can really make serious progress. And on January 31st, we can look back and say, my goal was to lose five pounds. I lost four and a half pounds and I'm elated. 
Because bare minimum, I only needed to lose three, but I set my goal at five to push myself. And look, I um, lost 4.5 pounds. And those are the wins that we celebrate. So inside the academy, you get that support. You come in and you get um, pre-recorded training modules on everything from couponing, budgeting, um, how to use a breakdown, how to create a breakdown, how to read the weekly ads, sales cycles, how to build, maintain, and sell your stockpile, how to create a grocery plan, how to create a meal plan, because those two go hand in hand. And a lot of our money is spent at the grocery store. A lot of our money is spent eating out. So when you have a good meal plan and you have a good grocery shopping plan, you put those together, you can easily probably find $200 a month in your budget that you can put somewhere else. In the Academy, we're, this month, we're doing all things savings and motivation. And I believe it's next week, our live is going to be about how to stay motivated to coupon and how to stay motivated in life. And after last night's live, I can't wait for next week's live. Like I'm on fire. So if you want more support, you want accountability, you want to live the life you love and be more intentional with your money, I invite you to join the Academy. Um, for a few more days, you can join for just $32 per month when you lock in for a year. The regular price is going to go back up to $49 per month. But right now, when you lock in for a year, you can get in for just $32 per month. That is four months totally free. You also get two one-on-one -on -one calls with me that you can activate at any time. So if you want me to help you specifically with your budget, you want me to help you specifically with your savings plan, you want me to specifically help you create a grocery plan and meal plan template for your family that you can follow every single month, you can activate your one-on-one -on -one and bam, there it is. And then you also get one Zoom group call with me where I'll do a group training and group live Q&A where you can talk to me and I can talk to you and you can get the support that you need to make progress on these big financial goals. I am here to help you maximize your life one coupon at a time. Imagine how it would feel to go to sleep at night knowing that you used your money in the best way possible. And guys, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be exactly what you want, but you're going to be leaps and bounds ahead of where you were before, right? The reason that you join a coaching program and you invest in yourself is because a coach helps you get to where you want to go faster. Of course, you can lose, lose weight without a personal trainer. Of course, you can live healthier without a personal trainer. But when you hire that personal trainer, you invest that money, you invest your energy, you do the work, you're going to lose weight. You're going to get toned a whole lot faster than if you did it on your own. It took me 12 years. Well, it didn't take me 12 years. Let's just say it took me about eight years to really learn how to coupon well. And I learned by myself. You join the academy and I, it was been like six months. You do the work. You're going to be couponing like a boss, like drop you off at any store. You should be able to coupon as long as you are doing the work. Like Kiana, when she was talking about earlier, when she said that she's being intentional with her money because she's been in the academy for a year. OK. So. If that was good, type yes in the chat. Let me see. I see lots of hellos. Hey, Vera. Heather had to go. Shanika said it was great. Yes, it was. Joya said last night's live was everything. Yes, it was. So two more things that um, or three more things that can add up for you when you're not thinking about things that you're spending your money on, but you're not being intentional. So um, anything that's small that doesn't help you reach your big win, those small things add up. So if it's $2 a day, $5 a day, $10 a day, lunch at work, if you physically have to go to work and you are buying lunch every day, I want you to look back at the past 90 days and see how much money did you spend on lunch at work. And for that amount of money, could you, create it, could you have created similar meals or different meals at home for less than that? You probably could have, but guess what? It takes work. Some of my other coworkers would say, I don't feel like putting my lunch together. It's easier just to buy. And I'm like, when you're buying a $10 salad every day, you could have got romaine lettuce. You could have got some chicken. You can buy a bottle of Caesar and you can have at least when you buy three hearts of romaine, that's three salads. And those things are like $3. You can get a bag of chicken, $6. 
dressing. For $10, you can have three days worth of salads and you can add whatever you want to those bad boys, right? Look to see how much you spent on lunch the past 90 days if you physically go to work and bought lunch. And I just want you to see how can you change this? I'm not saying don't treat yourself. I got to the point where when I was working in my corporate, I was buying lunch too often. So I implemented one a week. Four days a week, I bought lunch. Once a week, I gave myself $10 to treat myself to lunch if I wanted to. And if I didn't treat myself to lunch, I took that $10 and I put it in my savings account. If this makes sense to you, type yes in the chat. Because buying lunch at work adds up. You can go eat lunch with your with your coworkers if that's still something people do with Corona. I don't even know anymore. But I would my friends would eat out. I would bring my little lunch from my lunch box and be ready. But it did take me time. I would prep my lunch the night before. So in the morning, all I had to do was grab and go. Grab and go. Okay. Snacks from the vending machine. Same thing at work. Excuse me. If you're going to meetings in different buildings, some people travel around. Those snacks in the vending machines add up. I am a snacker. My kid is a snacker. In my coupon bag, in my purse, I used to in my car, I don't right now. My coupon bag, my purse, Kinsley's bag, I have little snacks everywhere. So if you are a snacker and you know you like snacks, get you a little Ziploc baggie and every week throw snacks in that baggie and leave it in your car. Put a couple snacks in your work bag. Put a couple snacks in your kid's bag. Leave a couple snacks in the car if you know you are a snacker. I learned this from my mother years ago. That woman always has bottles of water in her car and she always has crackers, chips, cookies. She always has something because she likes to snack. She's like, you can get hungry at any moment. Just have something to nibble on to hold you over until you get home. Because otherwise, if you're going to vending machines, if you're running to the 7-Eleven to get stuff, those things are overpriced. It's even better for you to just buy the big $6.99 bag of chips at Walmart. There's 24 bags of chips in there, most of them. That's 24 days of snacks. Or if you eat two a day, that's 12 days of snacks, but it's $6.99. As opposed to you spending a dollar every day for 30 days, that's $30. Yes, 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 child, it does. I always had a snack drawer. I know what you meant, Vera. Yes, always had a snack drawer at work. I had a whole snack drawer and I had a medicine cabinet, okay? So those are things that will add up. And then last but not least is subscriptions you don't use. So that's one thing I cleansed myself of in 2020. Um, I had a couple subscriptions of things that I was not using. I wanted to support some people. I supported them for a few months. But if I haven't logged in to whatever course, if I haven't logged in and watched something like my CBS viewer, I need to cancel that because I haven't logged into that for a while. The thing is, you can restart that subscription at any time. So, yes, I want to save my $6.99 right now. If I'm not using it right now, why do I have it? I'm actually going to cancel that one tonight because that's one I missed, right? It's only $6.99, but that $6.99 adds up. One mistake I made in 2020 is um, I moved right the week, the week of the shutdown, I moved, increased my rent by hundreds of dollars. Um, and also at that same time, um, I had uh, got a co-working space. Maybe like I had the co-working space because I didn't want to work in my house anymore. My house was small. Um, my first apartment was small. Then I moved to my bigger apartment. So I had that co-working space, I think, for a month. I worked in there at the end of February. I worked in there for the first two weeks of March. Then it was Kinsley's spring break. So I was like, oh, I'm going to take a week off. I kept paying for that co-working space for like seven months because I didn't even realize it was coming off of my business credit card. And I was like, you know what? That's a mistake I will not make again. Because that's seven hundred dollars, I can't get back. We couldn't even go to the co-working space. I think five months into it, we could have gone, but I had Kinsley with me, and I can't take her there. So I wasted about seven hundred dollars paying for a place that I could not use. That's also because I wasn't being as diligent with my um, business credit card. I had two business credit cards. That was the one that was kind of like the emergency backup. I had put the um, co-working space on that. Whatever doesn't matter. The point is. Check your subscriptions monthly. If it's something that you're paying for that you want to use, make the time, 35 minutes a day. For me, it's courses. I have a couple courses I was paying for monthly, coaching, um, smaller, lower level coaching that I was paying for. But I realized, and you may realize this about yourself, if it's $20 or less, it doesn't really motivate me to be like, rah, get in. Anything that's like 
$30 and above, I don't know what it is about the 20s. When it's $30 or above, I'm like, all right, girl, you need to show up. So I had a couple $20 memberships that I was paying into, but I wasn't using them. I supported the person. I bought their products. And I was like, you know what? I need to cancel this because I'm paying for it, but I'm not using the information. Or for some of the things, I have outgrown the information. So I need something upper level. So I invested in a, I'm not even going to tell you how much it is. Just know it's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Mastermind, because I need to up level. The $20 courses, the $200 courses, they're not tickling my fancy. They're not making me wake up in the middle of the night like, what work do I need to do to show up, right? So go through those subscriptions. If you bought courses last year, log into them. If you are in the academy and you haven't looked at your training modules, go look at your training modules, go through them, print out the workbooks, download the workbooks, use the workbooks, go in and use those things. If not, cancel them. Amazon is tricky. Yes, Amazon and also Apple. There was things coming out on Apple. I was like, what is this stuff? Apple, cancel. I don't need this, okay? So check all your subscriptions, see things that you don't use. And if it's something that's important to you that you want to use, make time, be intentional with your money. And anything that you invest in will come back to you 10 times over if you do the work. I'm going to say that again. Anything that you invest in monetarily will come back to you 10 times over if you do the work. And so I invested in a program, my first, my first coaching program. And I saw how much money I made my first four year in business. And I was flabbergasted that I was like, oh, my gosh, the coaching, the mindset, the training really, really helped me. Because without that, I don't know, I would have been a little bit of a fish out of water. Like I would, like I said, I would have made money. But I don't think I know that without my coaching program, I would not have made as much money as I did in 2020. It's not as much as I wanted to make, but it's a lot more than I thought. It's a lot more than I realized, I would say. So check your subscriptions and see where they are and uh, let go of the ones they're not using and double down on the ones that you know you want to use to 10 extra return. Does anybody have any questions? I want to, um, I definitely need to get back into the subscriptions I paid for. Perfect. I wanted to celebrate. We had another member join the Academy, Miss Cheryl R. I don't think she's going live today. But we are up to six amazing women who have joined. Are you next? Are you ready to take your money to the next level? Are you ready to make progress on your big financial goals? Are you ready to start couponing like a boss, meal planning better, and really taking your savings and putting it towards your financial goals? If so, come join us in the academy. We would love to have you. We would love to help you. I have a big goal, and I'm going to say it on every live. My goal is 200 new members this month. We have six down. We have 194 to go. That is a big, 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 scary goal. I was terrified to say that out loud, but I have a goal to help 500 families this year. 500 families. If I help, let me, let me just do the math. If I help 500 families save this much money per year. I want to help you guys save collectively over a million dollars this year. If I help 500 families and they all save around $3,000 in the year, that'll be over a million dollars that they would have saved collectively. That is freaking amazing. So my goal this year is just to help more people save more money, be more intentional with your money. Find your big financial goals. And for some people, that is literally just, Crystal, I've never been a good at saving money and I want to reframe my mindset and I want to save more. So literally, your first plan could just be, all right, your first goal is going to be, let's save your first $100 in a bank account that you don't touch. We're going to start and meet you where you are. The thing about the academy is, is I'm not just telling you what to do. I'm showing you a strategy of shopping with a purpose that you can tailor fit to your family because every single family is different. Some families are saving a whole lot more than $300 per month. I've had people save $10,000 in my program, $5,000 in my program. I've had people pay off their kids college, find $600 per month in their budget, find $500 per month in their budget. I had people start their side hustles and start making money from it. So they're saving money, couponing and making money by selling their stockpile. And I have people from 
all ages, all races, all walks of life. We have single people. We have married people. We have um, empty nesters, people with lots of kids. So it doesn't matter where you are. If you have the desire to coupon better and save more money, then this space is for you. It's very supportive. It's very motivating and it's very inspiring. You're going to feel so much better after every live. You're going to be craving so much more. My goal from 2021 is to work from home. Yes. That that was my goal for such a long time. It feels good. Now there's a there's a double sided coin to it. I'm gonna tell you this, I'm gonna be honest. So I had big, big plans for today. And um I was tired. I think in the past two nights I've only gotten like seven hours, well, not seven hours, but how many hours did I sleep? Probably about eight to nine hours of sleep in two nights. So today I crashed. That often happens. I crashed. So I took like an accidental one hour nap and then I took another accidental two and a half hour nap. And I'm like, why didn't you wake me up? He was like, you were sleeping. So he ended up cooking our dinner and everything because I was knocked out. I didn't even wake up until like it was seven. Was it after seven? It was after seven when I woke up. Um, so that's the plus and minus. So I'm going to work a little bit later tonight, but it is amazing. The one thing that I love about having my business is the time freedom. Like the time freedom. It's it's in that it's I can't explain it. I know 1000% that it would ruin me if I had to go back to a nine to five lifestyle. And couponing gave me this. Couponing gave me this freedom. Creating a business around couponing created this. And I'm going to have an Instagram post coming out probably next week where I'm going to tell you guys how much I made from having my business, my first school year, year in business. I'm going to tell you this. I did not make the six figures that I wanted. I don't have any excuses for that. I could have went harder. I probably could have did it, right, if I would have went harder, but COVID and everything else. But what I will say to you is it showed me that my first two jobs out of college, I only made about $30,000, $35,000 a year. I made more than that my first full year of business in a business that I freaking made up. I'm going to tell you that right now. So whatever you put your mind to, whatever financial goal you have, whatever freedom goal you have, you can do it. For sure. For sure. Fill that wall. Vera, that is my plan to fill the wall. Fill the wall. Swap is awesome. The best decision I ever made. Crystal is an excellent teacher. Thank you. I've been couponing for 30 years. I don't know life without it. Same, not for 30 years, but my whole adult life. So since I was 18 and I went to college, I've been couponing. I don't know life without it. But it's in the past, I'm going to say the past four years, I've really honed in my skills. Um, Created my shop with a perfect frame, shop with a purpose framework that I didn't even know that I had. Um, and I really put a name to it last year and really put the steps to it. But I had been following those steps forever. And the past two years, just being much, much more intentional with the money I had from my full time job, with the money I made from my side hustle, and then the money I made from my full time business, I was just as intentional as possible. Um, did I, was I perfect? Absolutely not. Did I still waste some money? Absolutely. But I still wasted less than I would have if I wasn't intentional, if that makes sense. So I wasted, but I still didn't waste too much because my priorities were in order. All right. Does anybody have any questions about being intentional with their money before I go? This live was great. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I can't wait to see more of you inside the academy. If you are on the fence and you're like, Crystal, I'm thinking about joining this academy, but I'm not 100% sure. I have questions that I do not want to ask on YouTube. Shoot me an email and I will hop on a call with you tomorrow and we can chat about how the academy can help you. So I'll put my email in the comments. If you're like, Crystal, I, 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 I don't know. Shoot me an email. And I will, um, hello at kristamaximize.com. Shoot me an email and we can hop on a call tomorrow and we can chat about how this academy can really help you. She said you've gone from filling the door to filling the wall. Yeah, when well, my office was at that door. Now we got a whole wall. Yeah. And then my apartment in Florida, I don't even have a wall behind me. I had to use the side wall. So I'll be here for a bit with this wall. Let's show. 
We got two new Cheryl's, Cheryl M and Cheryl R. Who's next? That's all I hear in my, my head. Who's next? Go, 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 go. Yeah. Who's next? Yeah, I would love to chat it up with you guys. We can definitely do a clarity call if you're on the fence and you're like, Crystal, I'm interested, but I don't even know. Come chat with me, girlfriend. Come chat with me. All right. I don't see any questions popping up. Shoot me an email if you want to hop on a clarity call to chat about how the Academy can help you. In the meantime, watch a video or two. Let the ads play through. That will also really help the channel. Trying to get my views back up. I'm trying to get my subscribers back up to where it was pre-COVID. So please keep watching. Please keep sharing. I just shared a video on how to create a 2021 savings plan, which is what actually that's what we're doing next week in the Academy. Motivation is the week after. So this Monday in the Academy, we're creating our 2021 savings plan. So what I showed you on the YouTube video, we're going to break that down even further. And I'm going to go individually with them and help them figure out their big financial goals, uh, which we already kind of set when we um, did our big goals and then just breaking those down into a savings plan that will work best for their family. All right. So I will see you guys tomorrow for, I don't know what day, this is day eight. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for day nine. Bye.